We're still in the book of Joshua, and uh, we've seen the fact that the land has been apportioned. We've uh, seen the fact that uh, there's been cities of refuge set up. The Levites have been given their cities and the grazing land that they need, and uh, misunderstandings between the two tribes that decided to settle outside of uh, the uh, the other the east side of Jordan have been settled. And I like the way it, in, it talks about in chapter 23, the very beginning, it says, many days, many days, that's good. They had a rest from their enemies. Uh, they actually got to enjoy the land that they had come into. Uh, and uh, the battling was over for a while. And we see that uh, Joshua is getting ready to make his farewell address. You know. That's been something that a lot of good fathers have done here in the Bible. We've seen Abraham with Isaac, and we've seen uh, so many times the fathers wanting to share the wisdom, and we will see that again in the in the in the uh, following chapters where David talks to Solomon. And uh, but in any case, Joshua calls the elders, the heads, and the judges together, and. Uh, He's uh, going to kind of make a farewell address here and wants to try to give some last-minute wisdom uh, to them and way to make them uh, happier. And he says, you've seen it. You've seen God fighting for you. You know what he can do when he's on your side and when you are obedient to him. And there's still some more uh, people to be driven out of the land. But he says in verse 6, but be uh, very cautious to keep all that's been written in the book of the law. Do not turn to the left or to the right and watch your associations with others. In verses uh, 11 and following it says, and love the Lord your God. Don't be intermarried in verse 12 it says with the people of the land. And uh, he says, I'm going the way of the world. Uh, I know that my death is approaching, he's saying. In chapter 24, verses 1 through 3, uh, he gives them a history lesson. goes all the way back to Terah, Abraham, and forward. And uh, tells them about how God has dealt with the people of Israel. And then he brings them to a decision point. One of my favorite verses, uh, because I've believe that uh, we have taken this position in our family. He says, now therefore, now therefore, fear the Lord and serve the Lord. But listen to what he says. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourself today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which are beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're now living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah, I think that all of us uh, today need to come to that same uh, decision point. Uh, what are we going to serve? Uh, what are we going to give up our life for? What will we trade each hour that we have left here on earth for? Will it be for the gods that our fathers served? Uh, maybe your father served the living God. Uh, or maybe he served materialism. Or maybe he served sensuality. But he says here, whether it's the ones that your fathers served or whether it's the ones that the Amorites served, you got to choose today who are you going to serve. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. What a great text. And then he gives a warning in verse 19 and 20. Uh, he says, Worship no other gods. Uh, don't worship any other gods. Interestingly enough, as we look at this challenge of who will you serve, and he talks to them about serving the Lord God, the living God, the people all entered and say, We will. 
And when he says don't worship false gods, uh, they say we will not worship false gods. And Joshua dies at 110. Eliezer dies. And uh, a generation has gone by. 15 years of battling to take the land is completed. And we're going to be looking tomorrow at entering into a new period of time, the period of the judges. But what can we take away from this closing that Joshua has? Well, there's three points that I hope that you'll see. And then a final statement that I hope that you'll make. The first one is there very clearly in verse 14 of chapter 24. Fear the Lord. Serve the Lord. And worship no other gods found down there in verse 19 and 20. Fear the Lord. Serve the Lord. Worship no other gods. And the conclusion that I hope that you come and the statement that you'd make today. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. And that's my thought for today. God bless you and have a great day. Well, how can you be sure you're going to heaven? My son said I should never end a message without telling people how they can be sure they're going to heaven. You can find it easily in just a few verses in the book of Romans. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. We all sin every day. By unclean thoughts, a quick answer to someone that's inappropriate, uh, whatever it might be, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. And we know that the wages of sin are death. Romans 6.23 tells us that clearly. The wages of sin are death. We're all guilty of sin and we all deserve death. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's it. That's, that's exactly how God showed his love. He allowed us to see that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, died for us and rose again to prove that he had the power over death. Now watch this. How do we obtain this? It's one thing to know it. You can have it here in your head, but not down in your heart. You know, here's how we obtain it. If we confess and believe in our heart, God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. And it says believing it's considered righteousness, not our own righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. With our mouth, we confess. And it says, and, and when we confess, it results in salvation. In verse 13, it goes on and says, whoever will call upon the Lord shall be saved. So if you've confessed your sin, said, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I know that you died for my sins. I'm going to turn from sin and self and to you and to you alone then you can know for certain if you really meant it, really meant it, then you know that you have eternal life in heaven. I hope that you've prayed a prayer similar to that, that you've acknowledged Christ as your Savior, that you've invited him into your life to be your Lord and your Master, that you've turned from sin and self and received him to be the Lord of your life. And that's my prayer for you. Remember, at the end of this clip, there's an opportunity for you to see the last lesson that we had, and also a clip that says how you can have peace in a broken world with the three circle illustration. It's a wonderful witnessing tool to share with others if they don't know Christ as Savior and to see how God fixed a broken world. God bless you and have a great day.